I've covered a couple of these emulation boxes on my channel and this is the newest version. The Super Console X2 comes with two controllers, hookups and more. And I wanted to share my thoughts about this. Um, you know, everybody's gonna have their opinions about this. And uh, if you want more info, there will be a link below. But uh, you know, you can find these on Amazon and eBay as well. Here are the wireless controllers. They are functional. They take two AAA batteries. Um, they're okay. They're not my favorite, uh, but they are functional and they do work. Here is the AC plug that comes with it. it. Does come with an HDMI cable. This does double as a TV device. Comes with a USB hub that you need, especially if you're using mouse and keyboard uh, for those computer games. And uh, here is the remote. This does double as a TV device. It is Android 9.0. And uh, here's the actual little console. A tiny little thing, just like the other ones that I've covered on my channel. Uh, yep, pretty familiar shape. And uh, as you can see, pretty compact. Great for people that don't have a lot of space. Here are the back inputs and you will be needing that USB hub. Since on the side of this unit, it includes two USB ports, you'll need the USB hub for your computer inputs, mouse and keyboard to play the computer games. One of the USB ports is used for this and mine came with a 256 gigabyte micro SD card. And uh, here are the specs of this unit, let's jump right in to see what you are looking at when you boot this up. I'm not gonna cover the TV mode, this is just the, the uh, consoles and computers it emulates, and in very small numbers, you can slow this video down and review it. It shows the amount of games that are included. Now, it does say total over 107,000. There are duplicates. There are some things about this that kind of uh, inflate that number, but there's still a lot of games, okay? There, there, are, there are things about this that uh, I, I will definitely share that I couldn't get to work, but a lot did work, and I'm gonna share that in this video. Many different things that you can play on this device, and it comes all uh, bundled together. Um, just uh, an amazing, collection of consoles and computers and handhelds going way back and some some pretty sweet systems that you may remember growing up and playing uh, you know this this device can function for many things for people that want to sample something that they never discovered themselves you know a lot of things are very very expensive now not available for sale and so this is a great way to experiment and to try different things all in one spot and lots of console and arcade games you can also easily add and delete games using a computer putting the micro SD card into your computer slot and doing it that way a great way to check out additional homebrew games as well so another function uh, for this device and so yes uh, is it gonna be for everybody absolutely not but there is a ton to check out here. Great for kind of the casual person that's done collecting and just wants to play something all in one spot. Dreamcast, nice to see that there. And later I'll talk about Sega Saturn. But it has a lot of obscure computer stuff as well. And I'm gonna check out some of that computer uh, side of this device. It does require mouse and keyboard for some of it. Um, lots of neat handheld uh, devices emulated on this as well. PlayStation, PSP, even obscure stuff like Supervision. All right, let's jump right in. In the menu, there's lots of things that you can tweak to make a particular uh, device perform better. And there's lots of different options. You do have to tweak things from time to time to make them run or use a different emulator or use a different resolution or video mode. And so uh, there's lots here that you can adjust. 
And so here's the actual uh, menu and how it looks. It gives you kind of a brief description of what game you've chosen. Uh, pretty nice setup. And overall, it was easy to navigate. Here's PlayStation and it's running great. And as you can see here, lots of games and classics that you grew up with. You know, as time moves on, more and more people will have grown up with the original PlayStation. I know it's very popular as, you know, its library was full of iconic classics that people love and still play today. Also, here's PSP. Again, you're gonna have to adjust it in the emulators to make it run uh, the best, but uh, as you can see here, playing great, very functional. And, you know, uh, Paul Phoenix being one of my favorite characters from the Tekken series, I played a lot of Tekken 3 and absolutely love this series. Tons of fighting games and arcade games are included. Here's Samurai Showdown 5 Special. There's even different versions of games included and you're gonna have your favorites. I know I have mine. And so you can use your own controllers on this device. So if you don't wanna use the standard controller that it comes with, you can use a nice fighting stick. Uh, I don't know which ones are compatible, but this is Bluetooth enabled as well as, you know, wireless USB uh, can be used with this. So you might have to experiment with what controllers work, but uh, very functional games played great from what I experienced. And definitely there are gonna be many favorites that you are gonna experience. The N64 can be sometimes difficult to emulate, but I was able to tweak with the emulators and get this San Francisco Rush 2049. Looks like it's playing great. And uh, you know, there's gonna be lots of N64 games on here and all the classics that I remember I saw on here, as well as many obscure consoles such as the 3DO and Alone in the Dark. There's not a ton of 3DO games on this device, but you can easily add more. And so, you know, but what I played so far played great and was really happy to see this classic on here as that's a game that I remember playing on a 3DO back in the day. Sega Dreamcast is on here with some iconic classic games, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and as you can see here, it's uh, it's looking great and extremely playable. And you might have to tweak things, as mentioned before, in the settings to get a game to run perfectly. But I had no problems with the default settings. Also, 32X. I'm a big Virtua Fighter fan, as one of my favorite games playing on that failed add-on for the Sega Genesis. But you know. Uh, it was nice to see it running great and uh, lots of different types of games too not just fighting not just racing there's all different types Sega CD well represented here's Dark Wizard a game that I have fond memories of playing growing up and you know lots of strategy lots of role-playing game you name it the genre is included on this emulation box and so this is a good way to check out, especially like an RPG. Uh, there's save slots where you can save a game and its progress. Sega Genesis, lots of Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. Here's Gauntlet 4, one of my favorites on the console as this, is, this game is a, an amazing sequel to the arcade classic with some additional features. This device is far from perfect. There's gonna be sound issues. Occasionally had a game lock up, but you know, the, the scope of what this offers for a reasonable price, you know, price varies depending on where you get it. Um, you know, you go to places like AliExpress, you're probably gonna save money. Uh, you can get this on Amazon as mentioned before, as well as eBay, but you know, for the price, it has a lot of value. Now, you know, it, you may, may not be into emulation or don't like the fact that it includes all these games, but there's a lot of people out there that are done collecting. Here's Virtual Boy 
and this is a reasonable way of playing these games that are very difficult to get it's very difficult to get a virtual boy console and the aftermarket is so expensive for some of these games it's just not attainable for the general public and and for the most part unless you're an extreme collector that wants to pay up exorbitant amounts of money for some of these games game boy advance is well done on here this is metal slug advance kind of a variant of the metal slug series that is uh, running great on here and so you know for me I, I know that there's just a lot of people out there that want to play games and I'm not here to tell you this is right or wrong you play the games how you want the way you want lots of Super Nintendo and Super Famicom are included Here's Choplifter 3. This is a game that sometimes gets overlooked. I have enjoyed this game from the time it came out as, you know, this is a game that takes me back. You know, it was a great sequel to the Choplifter series. And, you know, I really enjoyed this one. There's also obscure stuff such as here. This is Bonk 3. And, you know, this is so expensive. And, you know, even the mini console for the TurboGrafx-16 is, is, is stupid expensive now. So, you know, that's, that's the frustrating part is some of these games are really just not accessible to many people anymore. There is a lot of computer emulators offered on this console. And you do need a mouse and keyboard setup to play many of them. Here is a Sharp X68000 playing a timeless classic Gradius and wow music's great plays great um, here is MSX2 and this is Vampire Killer this is a parallel offering of the original Castlevania offered on that computer line plays a lot differently than the NES counterpart and well worth checking out nice to see it included here and so there's just going to be a lot of these types of things offered on this device where, you know, they weren't necessarily be accessible any other way to people that just want to play games. Here is Amiga playing Arkanoid, Revenge of Doe, and, you know, using a mouse to control, and, 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 it, and, it's, and it's playing great. And this is, a, this is a game I remember playing on the Amiga back in the day. And, you know, uh, for some out there, this might be the way to go to play these as, you know, setups for original hardware are difficult. Um, there are some offerings of aftermarket products for some of these classic computers, but for the most part, they are difficult to acquire now. This is Crystal Castles on the Atari ST emulator, and uh, kind of cool to see this version. Haven't played this version quite a lot. And so uh, going back and experience it, pretty sweet. Atari 8-bit always seems to be underrepresented when talking about Atari's vast history and influence on the industry. Nice to see Blue Max here. This is a game that I played quite a bit on the Atari home computer back in the day. So 8-bit games are uh, abundant on this device. And this is definitely one I recommend going back. But also, there are kind of oddball consoles such as the Atari 7800, which never gained a lot of traction. But there are a lot of fans, and uh, all the original releases are available on this device. Again, you can add homebrew and aftermarket games to this device pretty easy. Atari 5200, another console underrepresented. 40th anniversary of this console this year by the way so it's nice to see that Atari 5200 games are on here and was able to get them going even links and you know there's there's options on how you want to have it displayed on your monitor different uh, resolution options and screen sizes but Toki here the links version pretty awesome haven't played this in quite a while so going back to it it was pretty sweet as well as you no know, 
obscure handhelds such as the Wonder Swan. Both color and black and white versions are represented. There's also Neo Geo Pocket Color and Neo Geo Pocket on this device. But yeah, I haven't played a lot of this version. Lots of the old school classics are included as well in television. Odyssey 2, ColecoVision. Uh, you know, a lot of those consoles that you may have not grown up with, or maybe that they came out before you were playing games, well now you can experience them all in one spot, uh, as well as, you know, there was classics such as Frenzy. You know, I remember hearing about this sequel to Berserk way after it came out, and I'm glad I did, as it's one of my favorite ColecoVision games to this date. Now, not everything runs perfectly. This is Vetrex, and it had some weird sound issues. It would just kind of be louder sound from time to time. I could possibly check out another emulator with this. Other arcade games, especially some of the later releases, just did not run. No matter what emulator I used, it was slow, and there were sound delays, and just, to me, unplayable. So just know that there's that. As well as, unfortunately, I couldn't get Sega Saturn games to work. No matter what I tried, what emulator I used, it just didn't work. So uh, maybe you'll have better success than me, but that's it. I want to thank everybody for coming to my channel and viewing this. So, of the consoles and handhelds and computers that I showed in this video today, what was your favorite? What did you grow up with? Share your memories. And, as always, let's keep it positive and be respectful of other people's opinions. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. This is the immortal John Hancock, and you have a good day.